internal medicine and today I'm going to talk about the pathology of most common cancers of lung pathology of lung cancers so I'm going to talk very briefly okay so pathology of lung cancer this is a really very important topic for a medical student and for USMLE examinations so guys, we know the four important cancers you should know very well. They are what you call, uh, let me talk over here. It's um, squamous cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. Then we have a small cell carcinoma. Then we have what you call large cell carcinoma. And the other one is adenocarcinoma. Okay, guys, so these two, squamous cell carcinoma and the small cell carcinoma, are their centrally located cancers of the lung, okay? Whereas the large and the adenocarcinoma is what you call um, peripherally located cancers. Means they are not at the center, they are peripherally located, okay? So let's talk about the basic things of the squamous, squamous cell carcinoma. These points will help you to differentiate or help you to diagnosed correctly in your examination. The squamous cell carcinoma, as I said, is a centrally located, okay? And these cancers are often have what you call cavitary lesions. Cavitary lesions, okay? So in examination, if you, they mention of what you call a cavitary lesions centrally located, then keep an option of squamous cell carcinoma because we do have another option that's a small cell carcinoma and we have to differentiate with that. This squamous cell carcinoma, they usually metastasize to what you call a direct extension into hyaline nodes and the mediastinum. Hyaline nodes and mediastinum. Okay, guys. And the very important point in USMLE, try to look for raised calcium that's a hyperkalesemia and that's hyperkalesemia is due to the uh, substance known as a parathyroid hormone like substance p t h r like substance parathyroid hormone like substance okay so if the give the history cavity lesions if they tell the x-ray is the cancer is centrally located okay and the calcium on a laugh finding is raised then think that as a squamous cell carcinoma it could be, okay? Let's talk briefly about the small cell carcinoma. They are also centrally located, as I said. The two cancers that are centrally located, squamous cell and the small cell. These small cell cancers, they are very rapidly growing, okay? They metastasize to very important organs, that's the liver, adrenals, liver, adrenals brain brain and the bone so in USML examination if they give the history of affecting multiple systems of the body then think that it could be a small cell carcinoma like multiple symptoms like seizures if they give the mention of seizures like what you call syncope okay or adrenal glands of a decrease in hypertension or what you call a hypertension bone bone pain blah 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 okay so multiple systems are involved, they have the cancer, then you think of a small cell carcinoma could be the answer for this, okay? And remember, prognosis of this does not improve with early diagnosis. So it's a somewhat very dangerous cancer, okay? And what's about the syndromes? The three syndromes of the diseases they can give you that will help you to diagnose the small cell carcinoma, which are those? They are one Eaton Lambert syndrome. Eaton Lambert syndrome. Very important S I A D H syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. Okay, ADH hormone secretion, right? And the other one is Venacaval obstruction syndrome. Venacaval obstruction syndrome. So if they mention of these things. Or either they can mention of the signs and symptoms of these syndromes and ask you the diagnosis of what you call um, cancer, okay? 
Now let's talk about the large cell cancer carcinoma. They are peripherally located, okay? They can metastasize to different what you call uh, um, uh, areas of the body, uh, okay? And they have also a cavitation, okay? Cavitation, that's it. But this is not a really very common, so that's why they will not ask much question on this, okay? So if they give mentioned cavitation with uh, what you call um, peripheral located, then think of large cell carcinoma, okay? The most important now we're talking about the adenocarcinoma. They are peripherally located, remember. And the most important among this is a bronchioalveolar carcinoma. Bronchioalveolar carcinoma. Okay? Back. Bronchioalveolar carcinoma. Usually they give the history in neurosimal examination exposure to asbestos. If the guy or a man is working in an asbestos factory for 30 years, nearly 25 to 30 years, this should be the period. Look at this period. It should be 25 to 30 years. It's not within what you call a one to two years. It should be a very long period. Okay. And these adenoma, adenocarcinoma, they have the what you call a pleural effusion that because of what you call a high halogenated activities, pleural effusion can be seen in these patients. And they have what because of uh, fusion that have what we call a hyaluronidase activity is more. Okay. Right. Very important. And the other important feature of this carcinoma, they can give mention of what we call nodules. They can be single or multiple nodules. Okay. So very important points, guys. Try to concentrate on this and a very important uh, topic: pathology of different cancers. Okay. And how do you, what you call, uh, diagnose the disease of uh, adenocarcinoma? Do thoracotomy with a pleural biopsy. Do thoracotomy with pleural biopsy. Okay, guys. So, thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.